Welcome friends to another edition of Tiffin Box TV. I'm your host Seishu and I'm so pleased to be speaking with Jeff Rojas who is a photographer based in New York City. He's a fashion and portrait photographer and he's got a new book coming out in well the middle of next year really uh, that we wanted to talk about and we'll talk about that very book in a bit. But Jeff, welcome to the show. Hi, how are you? Thank you for having me. I Absolutely. sincerely appreciate it. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I hinted at you being a fashion and portrait photographer. Is there one particular thing that you prefer over the other? Uh, you know, I actually like them both equally. Fashion yeah. kind of fulfills my creative side and the portrait side uh, is more financially beneficial. So it's nice. It's nice to balance between the two. Absolutely. Uh, you, you know, I, I, you and I have met a long time ago and I remember you were just rocking it out even back then. Uh, the portraits were very stylized uh you were you really pay a lot of attention to uh, not just the lighting but the way people are dressed uh which i think is interesting because most of us especially if you're photographing guys we're like oh just put them in light good light and be all set uh you've got a different take to all of this and i was watching uh some of your creative live presentations which were phenomenal by the way I've, i think i have all of them <laughs> so uh i've been stalking you jeff <laughs> oh i appreciate it thank you <laughs> for the last few years uh but it's so nice to be able to talk to you about this very topic about photographing men um i think most uh, people would sort of be automatically attracted to just photographing women, but men seem to get sidelined a lot. So tell, talk to us about how you got your start and why photographing men has has taken up your time for the last couple of years. You know, it's, it's a great question. Um, so I sort of started off as a photographer as a hobby, mm -hmm. uh, trying to photograph. I had an old classic car I wanted to show off. I wanted to photographing that. Um, and I was working in corporate America, so that afforded me the opportunity to take workshops. So I had been consistently trying to educate myself in a lot of different ways. Uh, the workshops became the forefront of trying to learn photography. So that was the basis and the start of it. Um, from there, I, just, I started shooting away, and I started shooting women primarily. Um, I had studied with, or I was kind of understudying under Lindsay Adler, who uh, taught me basically everything I had known. But... I got to a point where I was trying to figure out what was important to me as an artist, you know, what, what I could contribute uh, that would feel personal. Because I, I think at some point, if you're working alongside someone or if, you work, if you're trying to emulate others, you don't really get a chance to feel what you want to do. And I kind of took a step back and figured, what am I good at? What do I know inside and out? What can I contribute to my line of photography? And a lot of that was I buy a lot of clothes. I, buy GQ magazine, like I have Esquire, I have all these different publications, and that's something I'm, I'm familiar to. Uh, I don't know, uh, personally until this point, how women's clothes feel. You know, I, that's not, I hopefully will never know what that feels like, but um, you just don't know until you put yourself in that guise. But I understood how men's clothes are supposed to fit, and that's where this all started. So um, kind of from there, just simplifying things so I could focus on the small details. Uh, that's great. Um, so you've spent uh, the last couple of years really honing your your skill set on photographing men. And I, by the way, I just received my PPA magazine where you're also featured. Um, a great great spread on on photographing photographing men. Uh, when 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 it comes down to it, you know, how do you prepare guys to be photographed? Because you know they're not very comfortable. They'd rather just be out there drinking a beer, you know, instead of being photographed. Um, and as you know now, uh, I, I spent a good deal of time photographing guys at a, a prep school in, in in New England, and it was always a you know a struggle to get them. You know, into the, the into the into the photo shoot. What do you do to get people excited? You know, more so than anything, I keep it as a very open line of communication. It's kind mm -hmm. of just like hanging out with a friend. You know, a new friend. You sit there, you talk about life and politics, whatever it is, whatever is going to interest that person. And it is a sense of sales. You're trying to sell that person to help you help themselves, basically. Because um, more than likely, when you put a subject in front of a camera, they're just going to freeze and not know what to do. But I educate my clients the same way, the same way that I would tutoring anybody for photography. You know, I'm, I'm constantly sitting down with a client saying, hey, this is what looks best uh, towards the camera. Say, if you're trying to talk in your stomach, put your chest out, lean in towards the camera. Actually educating the client helps them help me. Um, I will go through some posing inspiration, 
Uh, I won't have them replicate poses because normal clients aren't models. They look awkward. Uh, but I'll kind of say what certain things do, explain what negative space is. I'll explain what certain angles are best at their face. I'll ask them if there's anything that they feel uncomfortable showcasing. So let's say if they have a receding hairline and that's not something that they want. So I make sure to adjust my lighting accordingly. There's so many different uh, ways that I can manipulate everything on set to make them feel more comfortable. Uh, so inevitably what I'm doing is just talking, listening, and adjusting accordingly. Is the process different for portraits versus fashion, though? I actually take a lot of what I've learned from the fashion industry and include it in the portrait. Um, so the styling didn't necessarily come from the portrait side. It came from the fashion side. Um, the stylist that we've worked with, I mean, she's an amazing stylist, but she focuses on making people, all people, all shapes and sizes, look and feel their best. Now, that was with generally women. No one was really doing that with men. I mean, and you can pick up, if you're looking at GQ magazine, for example, that client didn't just show up and somebody just take his photo. He's, his hair is styled, his makeup is done, he's styled. You can still do the same thing with men that you can do with women. And I think a lot of people forget that because they feel like they have full creativity and full creative freedom with women. But you have the same thing with men. Uh, and there are a variety of ways that you can, you can accommodate accordingly. Well, that's a great point, really. I think uh, if there's anything that my audience should take away, it's just that very point where you know you treat treat men and women equally in Absolutely. front of the camera. Um, tell us a little bit about the book uh, because the book is coming out in March of 2016. Uh, it's called "Photographing Men: Posing and Lighting Techniques for Portraits, Commercial, and Fashion Photography." Why the book? Why did you have to put a book out when <laughs> you've got amazing? tutorials on creative live about this very subject you know what uh bucket list i've always oh. wanted to write a book yeah. um and it was one of those things that i said i would do before i die i'm still 27 so it'll be out before i turn 28 so it's a good first goal uh the other thing is that i look at this as a as a summary for everything that i've done in the last two years which is it's almost like a, a final my doctorate you know that, that final paper that you write and so i put all the small details things that i felt I could have explained better in the last two years or things that I felt like I've missed. So much so like body language. I talk about body language all the time, but body language is going to be an important aspect of this book. How do you pose a subject so they look their best for their specific, uh, let's say, career or profession? Because you don't want somebody who's a lawyer, for example, just like all mad and angry in front of the camera because that's not going to kind of respond well to their clients. So there's a lot of little nuances, uh, face shapes, how to choose lens choice for face shapes, things that I've discussed but haven't necessarily expanded on. So it's a synopsis of all those different things that I've wanted to do. Uh, I shoot a lot of headshots, and I think mm -hmm. this book will come in very handy uh, if, if, it's, if, if someone's a, a headshot photographer, for instance. I think it, 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 because, I mean, headshots are both men and women, obviously. Of course. Um, and uh, this, is, this is great stuff. Uh, is there anything in particular that's challenged you about photographing men at all? Um, I would say most people's sense of comfort oh. and what they identify themselves as. I think a lot of people inevitably have things that they're self-conscious of. So I call this perceived flaws. They aren't necessarily flaws that are actually present, but things that people think that they have. Because it's all about self-awareness, self-presence, right? So I may look at somebody and I may see them completely different than what they see themselves. And it's sure. just Absolutely. our own self-perception. Um, that's the most difficult aspect. So that's a part that I'm going to kind of elaborate on the book. Uh, also, not, not creating... Uh, not creating issues with some somebody's own personal appearance. For example, if they have acne, you don't want to say, "Hey, do you want me to, you know, retouch your face because you're ugly and you have acne?" Because that's not appropriate by any means. Or glasses, something so small as glasses. I, I mean, I wore glasses since I was a little kid, and it's really inconvenient when you're going to the beach. You got to worry about them getting knocked down. When you're going on a roller coaster, you can't wear them because if not, they're going to fly off. There's so many different inconveniences that. Right. Going to a portrait studio and asking to have your portrait taken, somebody saying because they don't understand the angle of light, can you take them off? I'm getting a glare. Something so small as that is just inconvenient for somebody with a quote unquote perceived flaw. And that's, that's kind of the nuances of that area of the book. Uh, then we're going to go, like I said, into posing, discussing uh, the complexities of body language and what you're expressing out of a portrait because just standing there isn't going to do anything, uh, even so much as your pupils dilating and what that means, you know, in a photograph. So one pupil that's dilated, ver sorry, one image of your pupils dilated versus the other one where it's not. That sense of intimacy and what that explains. So wow. all these different factors. It'll be fun. It'll be a fun process and a fun book. 
Uh, I, I'm really excited about this book, by the way. You know, really, I, I think this is this is a book that every photographer should own, uh, only because I think we've already discussed this. If you look on Amazon, you're not going to find any other book really out there that talks about photographing men. I mean, you might, but I think this is the most modern, the most sophisticated, most elegant book out there uh, that'll be that'll be coming out in, in March. I can't wait to get my hands on it, and I hope you get to sign it, uh, my friend. So thank you so much for joining me and to talk about this book and talk about photographing men because I thank think you. we are we are uh, we're definitely it's high time really to to have this book out there. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank Appreciate you very it. much for having me. Good. Uh, I will hopefully run into you at uh, PPE. Um, PPE. And uh, see I'll you in around. New York. All right. I'll see you in New York. Thanks Take a lot. Care. Bye. Bye.